In this video, I'm going to discuss about continuous probability distribution. From the previous video, we have learned that discrete probability distribution can be represented by mathematical function or by a table. Continuous probability distribution function also can be represented by using mathematical function, which is we call it as probability density function. The difference between these two mathematical functions is for discrete probability distribution, the possible values of x are listed down one by one, whereas the values of x in continuous probability distribution function, the x is given in interval form. And for the graph for discrete probability distribution, it is in the stick form. Whereas for the continuous probability distribution, the graph is a curve. And for discrete probability distribution, each possible values has a probability. So if we want to find the probability between A and B, we are going to sum the probability for the value of A up to B. For continuous probability distribution, the probability is the area under the curve. So therefore, in order to find the probability of X in between A and B, we are going to use the integration of the function of X from A to B. And for discrete probability distribution, the sum of all probabilities equals 1. Whereas for continuous probability distribution, the total area under the curve equals 1. And this can be used to determine whether an x is a continuous random variable. Now let us try some question. The function of x is defined as follow. Show that x is a continuous random variable. So if x is a continuous random variable, then the total area under the curve should be equal to 1. So in order to find the area under the curve, we are going to carry out the integration of the function from 0 to 2. So before carry out the integration, I take out the constant and expand the brackets. So when I integrate, I'll get something like this. Then when I substitute the x with 2 minus substitution of x with 0, then when I calculate, I found that it is equal to 1. So this show that x is a continuous random variable. Next example, y is a continuous random variable with probability density function given below here. Find the value of k and hence sketch the graph of the probability density function of f of y. Since we know that this is a continuous probability density function, so the total area under the curve of this function should be equal to 1. So to find the total area under the curve of this function, now I'm going to carry out the integration. Since there are two functions, for the first function from 0 to 2, the integration is k with respect to y. And for the second function is 2k from 3 to 4. So the integration is 2k with respect to y from the value of 3 to 4. And the total value should be equal to 1. So when I substitute y with 2 and y with 0, 
then for this one I substitute y with 4 and y with 3 so when I simplify then I found that k is equal to 1 over 4 so next in order to sketch the graph first I'm going to substitute the value of k that I have got just now then from here I can sketch the graph so for the x-axis this is value of y for the y-axis this is the value of f of y so from y from 0 to 2 the value of f of y is 1 over 4 when the value of y is in between 3 to 4 the value of f of y is 1 over 2 so this is the curve of the probability density function f of y next example the probability density function f of x can be written in the following form find the values of the constants a and b since x is a continuous random variable therefore the total area under the curve should be equal to 1 so to find the total area under the curve i'm going to carry out the integration for the first interval from 0 to 2 the function is ax for the second interval 2 to 4 the function is b minus ax so when i carry out the integration i will get something like this so first i substitute x with 2 then substitute x with 0 for this one i substitute x with 4 and minus substitution x with 2 so when i calculate it is equal to minus 4a plus 2b equals 1 from here i found that if i want to find the value of a and b i need another linear equation in order to carry out the simultaneous equation now from the function f of x since the first interval and the second interval are continuous where the boundary value here is the same so means when i substitute x with 2 i can use this function or this function so when i substitute x with 2 into this function i get 2x and when i substitute x equals 2 into this function i'll get b minus 2a so now i equating this 2 f of 2 then i get 2a equals b minus 2a so when i simplify b is equal to 4a so now i'm going to substitute this b equals 4a into the first equation so when i substitute b with 4a and when i simplify then i found that a is equal to 1 over 4 so once i have got the value of a and i substitute this value of a into this equation so i found that b is equal to 1 for continuous probability distribution probabilities are measured over intervals but not a single point for example if we want to find the probability of x from a to b then we are going to carry out the integration of the function from a to b in order to find the area under the curve from the interval a to b then under continuous probability distribution the probability of a single point is equal to zero this is because when finding the probability of x is equal to a actually it is the probability of x in between a to a so when we carry out the integration of the function f of x from a to a so the answer will be equal to zero now let's try this question the continuous random variable x has probability density function given here 
Find the probability of the question given here. First, in order to find the probability when x is less than or equal to 1, since we know that the probability is the area under the curve of the function, but here there are two interval, that is, there are two functions, and we need to choose the correct function. Since x less than 1 is in this interval where x is from 0 to 2, so means we need to choose the first function to carry out the integration. But the value of x is from 0 up to 1 because x is less than or equal to 1. So when we carry out the integration and when we substitute x with 1 and 0, and when we simplify, the probability is 1 over 6. Next, we are going to find the probability of x in between 1.5 to 2.5. First, we are going to determine the correct function used. Since x is in between 1.5 to 2.5, when we look at the probability density function, there are two intervals. One is from 0 to 2, one is from 2 to 3. So for x in between 1.5 to 2.5, we need to separate. First part is for the interval 0 to 2, we are going to use the first function that is from 1.5 up to 2. Then the second part is we use the second interval that is from 2 to 2.5 and we use the second function. For the continuous probability distribution, the stroke here does not give much effect on the result of the probability. So when we carry out the integration, so we will get something like this. Now we substitute x with 2 and x with 1.5 for the first function. For the second function, we substitute x with 2.5 and x with 2. So when we simplify, it is equal to 13 over 24. Next example, the continuous random variable x is uniformly distributed over the interval negative 4 to 6. Find the probability of the absolute value of x minus 5 less than 3. From the question, we are given that the continuous random variable x is uniformly distributed over the interval negative 4 to 6. Means the probability distribution function of f of x is equal to a constant from negative 4 to 6. And since x is a continuous random variable, that means that the total area under the curve is equal to 1. So let's say I use the k to represent the f of x. So in order to find the total area of this straight line, so now I'm going to carry out the integration. After the integration, I found that the value of k is 1 over 10. So therefore, the probability distribution function f of x is equal to 1 over 10 from the interval of x from negative 4 to 6. Once I have got the probability density function, now I can find the probability. So first I'm going to cancel off the modulus. So it is greater than negative 3 and less than positive 3. So when I simplify, x is greater than 2 and less than 8. But from the function, we know that x is only for negative 4 to 6. But for this one, x is from 2 to 8. So 8 is out of the range. So now I'm going to change the range up to 6. That is, x is greater than 2 and less than 6. 
So to calculate the probability, now I'm going to carry out the integration of this function 1 over 10 from x2 to 6. So when I simplify, then I get the value is 2 over 5.